It's the championship game. Your team is down by two points and the clock is running out. The crowd is going wild, screaming at the players, the refs, and the coaches. The atmosphere is electric. And then you look over and notice that the best player on the team is sitting on the bench, and so are the rest of the starters. What is going on? Why isn't Coach giving your team the best chance to pull off the win? It's a valid question, and it's a lot like what's happening on Earth. We're facing an energy crisis, the clock is ticking, and for some reason, we've benched our best players. Hi, I'm Miriam Nielsen, and this is Study Hall Sustainability. In our case, the Sun is our best player. It's the GOAT, like Simone Biles, Serena Williams, or Sue Bird. And it's not just our best player, it's also one of those athletes that makes everyone around them better too. See, the Sun gives Earth a massive amount of energy, in a lot of different forms, and a lot of that energy is renewable. It comes from natural sources that can be renewed or replenished faster than they're consumed. First, there's solar energy. That's the direct energy from the light of the Sun, which we can convert into electricity using solar photovoltaics, which are also known as solar PV in solar panels. But we can also get energy from the Sun's heat. We can use it to heat liquids, which creates steam that spins a turbine to make electricity. We call that thermal energy. The sun's heat also drives wind. Basically, that's when air moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. And those differences in pressure happen because of the differences in temperature. And those differences in temperature are because things like trees, mountains, and the shape of the earth mean the sun can't warm everything evenly. Wind energy can be captured to spin turbines on land or water to make electricity too. Or people can use windmills for mechanical energy to drive water pumps or food mills, you know, like your great, 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 great grandparents used to. And that's not all. The sun also drives the water cycle, and moving bodies of water, like rivers, create their own kind of energy. As water flows through a dam, it spins a turbine, which again, makes electricity. That's known as hydropower. The sun also grows plants. Plants use the chlorophyll in their leaves to capture energy from the sun, and then they can provide other types of energy. Like they can be used for bioenergy, where we burn plant or animal matter, aka biomass, either directly for heat or to boil water to create steam to spin a turbine to make electricity. Or plant matter can be turned into biofuel, like ethanol, which we can make from sugarcane, corn, grain, or other kinds of plants. And then we can combine it with gasoline and use it for transportation. So altogether, that gives us some sort of WNBA all-star team with Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, Candace Parker, and Maya Moore. And we didn't even give scouting reports for everyone on the renewable energy roster. There's also stuff like geothermal energy, which pulls from temperatures under the Earth's surface, and energy from the breakdown of waste in our landfills. But instead of using all that renewable energy, humans are acting like a basketball coach who benches the starters and goes digging for literally anyone else to fill the roster. And I do mean digging. Instead of using renewable energy, which is right there and always has been, we've been mining and drilling for fossil fuels. And like some no-talent basketball player, these fossil fuels are in danger of ruining the whole game. See, fossil fuels are things like oil, natural gas, which is really just methane, or coal that we burn to run just about everything today. And okay, technically, even fossil fuels come from the sun. It just took millions of years of photosynthesis, fossilization, heat, and pressure in the Earth's crust to turn the sun's energy into the fossil fuels we're using now. And the problem is, after all that time underground, fossil fuels and that random player Coach found aren't natural-born talents like the sun and Sue Bird. It takes a lot of energy to find those fossil fuels and get them ready to play. And when they're in action, they're basically just making the basketball arena and everyone in it hotter and more miserable. Those WNBA all-stars, though, they're always ready to go. And there are a lot of great reasons to put the renewable energy team into the game. Like, renewable energy is actually cheaper than fossil fuels now. By 2022, solar electricity had become 29% cheaper than electricity generated by fossil fuels, and electricity from onshore wind farms was 52% cheaper. And it's not just better for our bank accounts, it also produces less greenhouse gas emissions and pollution than fossil fuels do. It's way easier to get them ready to play. Even when we factor in the entire energy life cycle, from acquiring the new materials all the way to disposal, coal-fired electricity releases around 20 times more greenhouse gases per kilowatt hour than solar electricity. And some argue that there are geopolitical benefits too. Fossil fuels aren't equally accessible across the Earth, so a lot of countries end up having to import them. And that can get expensive. It also puts them at the mercy of things like disasters or global conflicts that affect imports and exports from those oil-producing countries. That's already been a motivator for some countries to switch to renewable energy. When Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, the European Union committed to adopting renewable energy even faster than before so they could stop relying on fossil fuels from Russia by 2027. The idea, basically, is that nobody owns the sun. Though I'm sure Elon and Jeff are trying. Every place has some sun or some wind, so renewable energy solutions could be a more widely accessible option for more places. So what exactly is the holdup? Why would a coach leave the all-stars on the bench? And why are we passing up on so many incredible resources? Well, because nothing's ever quite that simple. The WNBA all-stars might have scheduling conflicts or contract issues or old injuries acting up. And we haven't quite ironed out all the conflicts on the renewable energy roster either. Like, sure, no one owns the sun, but many countries would still need to build up a lot of infrastructure to make renewable energy work for them. And that's easier said than done. Plus, most solar panels, wind turbines, and battery minerals are still only made in a couple countries, like China, so countries could still be reliant on resources that are concentrated in just a few places. 
Plus, as you know from being a person who lives on Earth, it's not sunny all the time. While solar panels do work when it's cloudy, they're less efficient. And unfortunately for my windsurfing career, which I just this second committed to, it's not windy all the time either. So energy generated by solar and wind is intermittent. And people these days use energy around the clock, which means we have a whole other problem, finding a way to store all that energy so we have it around when we need it. Batteries are one solution, but they're expensive. And so far, the lithium ion ones we have only store energy for about four hours. Another option is, wait for it, gravity. Again, I ask, why are we digging mines deep into the Earth when solutions like gravity are readily available? There are a couple of ways we could use gravity. One, known as pumped hydro, works with water. So when solar or wind energy exceeds demand during the day, that energy can be used to pump water uphill. Then the water can be released at night for energy. But that requires having hills, which unfortunately for my new mountain carting career is not always a given. So some engineers are working on another way. For example, a building near Shanghai uses technology developed by a Swiss company to store energy. The building has 3,500 bricks inside its walls. When there's excess renewable electricity, it's used to lift the bricks up. Then, when electricity is needed, the 25-ton bricks drop back down. That spins a turbine that, one more time, makes electricity. But the falling brick solution obviously requires building a lot of huge structures, which is expensive. And then there's the issue of space. To completely convert to solar energy, we would need somewhere between 10,000 to 22,000 square miles of solar panels. That's about the size of the state of West Virginia, which could be great, except that West Virginia gets a below average amount of sun. Also, more importantly, people live there. Ideas like using biomass or biofuel also require land. Growing those plants takes a lot of energy, often from fossil fuels, fermenting corn into ethanol releases emissions, and burning them re-releases the greenhouse gases they trap during their lifetimes. And they're only truly renewable if people use and manage them sustainably, which we don't. And as a result, all the biofuel subsidies in the United States, for example, have only added to our greenhouse gas emissions. Which brings us to another challenge, people and their money. In the US, we've basically devoted our entire infrastructure to producing electricity with fossil fuels. The fossil fuel industry is a multi-trillion dollar machine, and these massive companies and their investors aren't gonna go quietly. Plus, it's become a political issue too. During the 2020 election cycle, oil and gas companies spent over $65 million lobbying Republicans and over $12 million lobbying Democrats, trying to make sure that whoever got in office would keep on supporting fossil fuels. And their lobbying did a number on the average citizen too. Lots of people in the US have become even more hesitant about supporting new renewable energy projects. One study found that between the spring of 2022 and 2023, 39% more wind and solar projects experienced serious organized opposition. And no, that's not just what happens when the Seattle storm takes down the Las Vegas aces. Lots of people's livelihoods are tied to the fossil fuel industry, and people don't want to lose their jobs. Or even if they generally support renewable energy projects and technologies, they don't want them in their own communities. Some people just don't like how wind turbines and solar arrays look. Some renewable energy projects really change the landscape. In Maine, residents fought against wind turbines going up on the shore of Sears Island. They were used to being known as a quiet, undeveloped getaway for locals and visitors, and they didn't want such a big aesthetic change to their beloved serene spot. Many in Maine believed there was a better alternative, put the wind turbines at Mack Point, a nearby oil and logistics terminal owned by an energy company. And that's the choice all of us face. Maybe we haven't quite figured out the perfect renewable energy solution, but even a WNBA roster without all your favorite players is better than sitting in a sweltering arena watching some no-talent nobodies running around. Our use of fossil fuel just isn't sustainable, and renewable energy is going to be critical. The good news is, despite all the late-game defense, there's been a lot of great progress in the transition to renewable energy. In the US, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 allotted hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks and grants for things like solar panels and wind turbines. In 2023, 22% of electricity was generated by renewable sources, and solar power generation is expected to grow 75% in 2025, while wind is expected to grow 11%. And overall, renewable energy production is increasing around the world, with 2023 seeing the fastest renewable energy growth in the last 20 years. Plus, there are still people doing a lot of work to come up with more viable solutions. If we, the fans in the stands, keep yelling about it and if the coaches, trainers, and agents keep working on ways to keep the players healthy, available, and affordable, then maybe we'll figure out a way to get the best players in the game before the buzzer. If you're enjoying this series and are interested in taking the full Study Hall Sustainability course and earning college credit from ASU, check out GoStudyHall.com or click on the button to learn more. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like, leave a comment, and watch Sue Bird tell Hank her college journey. Link below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.